السلام علیکم دس از دا پریزنٹیشن فار میڈیکل اسٹوڈنٹس بائی ڈاکٹر ممتاز احمد عمر اینڈ ٹوڈیز ٹاپک از فارن باڈیز آف فوڈ پیسجز اینٹمی آف ایسوفیگس ایسوفیگس از اے فائبرو مسکولر ٹیوب کنیکٹنگ دا فیرنگس ٹو دا اسٹمک ایسوفیگس اٹ بگنس ویئر دا انفیئر کنسٹرکٹو مسل مرجز ود دا کریکو فرنجیس ایٹ سی سکس لیول فارمنگ دا اپر ایسوفیجس فنگٹر ان اینڈ گرون ایٹ grown up adult esophagus is 25 cm in length the lower esophageal sphincter is a thickened circular smooth muscle and it lies 40 cm from the incisors the rigid esophagus scope its length is up till 40 cm the normal constrictions or extrinsic indentations along the length of the esophagus are at the level of pharyngo esophageal junction at c6 which is 50 cent- 15 cm from the upper incisors then crossover of the arch of aorta and left main bronchus which is around 23 cm from the upper incisors and the diaphragmatic hiatus which is 40 cm from the upper incisor introduction esophageal foreign bodies are not as much dangerous as the foreign bodies in the airway However it is commonly present present in the children most common is the coin and in elderly with dentures and the foot bolus anatomically it is found more commonly at natural constrictions of esophagus so what are the common sites the common sites starting from the mouth are the tonsil the base of tongue or the vesicle the posterior pharyngeal wall piriform fossa and the esophagus and in esophagus at the level of its norm uh, at the level of the constrictions uh, anatomical constrictions which are there which is cricopharyngeal bronchoaortic constriction and the, at the cardiac end so if you can see in this picture this is the mouth oral cavity and oropharynx and here is the fish bone which is stuck in the tonsil tonsil is the primary site or the first site where the a uh, foreign body can lodge so fish bones are commonly present at this area this is the vesicle this is the base of tongue so if it passes here and not stuck here the fish bone can stuck anywhere in the base of tongue or as in this picture in the vesicle this is the posterior pharyngeal wall it can stuck here and other foreign bodies can also lodge in these areas this is the piriform sinus etiology most commonly it is present uh, below the 5 years of age nearly 80% then in those patients uh, in which there is loss of the protective mechanism like those who are unconscious or having epileptic seizures or are in deep sleep or alcoholic intoxication then they can ingest the foreign body in their food pipe then carelessness especially poorly prepared food improper mastication hasty eating or drinking all these things they can lead to obstruction due to the foreign body lodgement then if there is narrow esophageal lumen like in cases of the esophageal stricture or cancer then in psychotic patients symptoms there will be history of initial choking or gagging with excessive coughing then there may be discomfort or pain patient may have dysphagia which may be either relative or absolute especially in cases of food bolus there will be absolute dysphagia then the there will be drooling of saliva the saliva will dribble out from the mouth patient may or may not have respiratory distress distress there may be substernal or epigastric pain or there may be partial obstruction like in dysphagia which i have already mentioned so signs there may be tenderness in the lower part of the neck on right or left side of the trachea on indirect laryngoscopy or mirror examination pooling of secretions may be visible in the piriform fossa or in the postcricoid region and it usually do not disappear on swallowing foreign body may be visible in this area foreign or foreign body may be seen protruding from the esophageal opening so investigations the most important is the x-ray both uh, x-ray soft tissue neck 
uh, anteroposterior and the lateral views are taken then in children chest and abdomen should also be in included to see if it has bypassed the uh, cricopharyngeus because if the foreign body it bypasses cricopharyngeus the chances are it will come out via the stools and there will be because is cricopharyngeus is the most narrowest part although uh, appendix opening is the most narrowest part of the body but usually no foreign body lodges there so cricopharyngeus is considered to be the narrowest part uh, where the foreign body can block and once it bypass this and there is no other pathology lower down so it will go all the way and re uh, remove in the stools so you can either perform rigid laryngoscopy like indirect laryngoscopy uh, you can do rigid laryngoscopy and visualize the foreign body if it is present anywhere till the post cricoid area ct scan in few cases may be needed then diagnostic esophagoscopy if the patient is constantly complaining of some foreign body sensation or uh, some uh, localized pain after the ingestion of foreign body then we may have to perform diagnostic esophagoscopy which can be either flexible which is done by the gastroenterologist or rigid esophagoscopy done by ENT surgeon so this is one of my patient in which usually the foreign body is stuck at crico at or just below the crico fringes by just looking at the x-ray it looks like a coin but it was not a coin so this is which was removed this is one of my other patient this is the uvula with light it is brightening too much this is the posterior pharyngeal wall and here is the foreign body the next picture which is more clearly showing it is a spring which the this is a 12 year old boy who swallowed it and it gets stuck in the valliculi so it is removed with little part because it was tightly stuck and uh, it is removed under local anesthesia so so this is an other patient a young boy and this was a coin both ap and lateral view lateral view will show that either it is in the food pipe or the airway so the airway is clear so this is in the food pipe and this is the endoscopic view this is the coin usually if you are not vigilant uh, and not uh, don't look uh, visualize thoroughly you can bypass it uh, the foreign body and later on you say that no foreign body is there so one has to be very Uh, thorough in examining all these areas when doing the esophagoscopy so this is the excess soft tissue neck lateral view this is the airway this is the food area and here this i think this x-ray is of very fine quality otherwise usually the foreign bodies or even the bone they are not visible this clearly so this is another uh, view of an x-ray soft tissue neck lateral view usually what we do you see just in front of the vertebrae there is a soft tissue area which is the esophagus and the food pipe and in front of that the black area this is the airway so how we can say that for uh, there is suspected foreign body if this soft tissue area is more than two third the size of the vertebral body then there is suspicion of foreign body because for uh, mid bolus also you cannot say uh, detect it on x ray because it is not radio uh, opaque so the soft tissue shadowing will be enlarged this is one thing this you see the soft tissue sh shadow it is more than two third of the vertebral body and second if there is blackening air in this uh, soft tissue food pipe area then there is also suspicion that some foreign body may be there so this is the different steps of the esophagoscopy removing the meat bone so meat bone is the most dangerous is one is one of the dangerous type of foreign body because it usually stuck like this and if you just 
pull it it can cause tear you see mild bleeding is there because it is not possible to remove it without small tears but if you cause perforation then which is one complication then it is very dangerous one so one has to be very careful in doing and removing the meat bone so these are the different this is the bone you see how the sharp edges are and it's very dangerous and difficult to remove but the most dangerous type of foreign body in any part of ear nose throat is the battery cell so treatment once the diagnosis of foreign body is made then it has to be removed so it can be removed while do by doing endoscopy so ENT surgeons usually perform rigid esophagoscopy a rigid esophagoscope it is passed the foreign body it is visualized and it is grasped and removed however sometimes flexible esophagoscopy done by gastroenterologists can also be able to remove the foreign body those foreign bodies which get stuck in the esophagus and difficult to remove without causing the uh, without Uh, not possible to remove without causing the perforation then in such cases cervical esophagotomy is carried out to prevent damage to the esophagus or trans thoracic esophagotomy because if perforation occurs cervical perforation and trans uh, thoracic perforation it is very fatal complication So these are the endoscopes used in the ENT. This is the direct laryngoscope. This is the bronchoscope, and these two. This is upper end rigid esophagoscope, and it is the rigid esophagoscope. If you see the difference in the bronchoscope and esophagoscope, in bronchoscope there are holes at the end and no graduation, whereas there are graduations in the esophagoscope. so this is the way a flexible esophagoscopy carried out through the mouth and it goes and visualize all the areas foreign body when reach the stomach may pass through rest of the gastrointestinal tract without difficulty but remember that there is no need to give laxatives to the patient to uh, quickly or hasten its removal so by natural process it should be removed in 2 3 it get out in 2 3 days however operative interference is required when there is pain and tenderness in the abdomen foreign body not showing any progress on periodic x rays sharp objects are likely to penetrate into the soft tissues of the abdomen if the foreign body is longer then 5 cm as it will be difficult for it to pass through the loops of the uh, small intestine or if there is pyloric stenosis complications the most common and the most dangerous complication is the esophageal perforation as there is very high rates of mortality if this uh, for esophageal perforation other less likely are the respiratory obstruction periesophageal cellulitis and abscess tracheoesophageal fistula if you get tear uh, the esophagus tearing the esophagus and entering into the trachea it will lead to tracheoesophageal fistula or else there will be ulceration and stricture again one important thing in elderly people after removing the foreign body you have to assess the esophagus is there for any stricture any fibrosis Bec uh, or any tightening or uh, narrowing so one has to assess the esophagus after removing the foreign body through the from the esophagus thank you